How do you handle first the acting situation and then also just with crew members? Because I think that's super valuable, especially for young um, filmmakers coming up. Okay, first of all, I would probably say that I've had the privilege of working with a lot of good actors who aren't like that. And I normally and I could put it down to if they're confident and they and they they know their stuff, they've got nothing to prove, so there's no ego, so therefore they don't they're not difficult. If they're nervous about something, they're worried about that big emotional scene coming up, they don't they haven't really learned their lines, they're a little bit anxious about it, that will come out in one way or another, which is probably animosity towards you. Um, and, and any of the good actors, and I mean good as in their performance, they're also the ones that turn up on time, carry the cases, make the coffee or whatever they, you know, when they're not working. And there's a correlation there, there really is. Um, and it's always the difficult ones. It's, it's funny, it's those what they call the enemy of production, where there's always one person, whether it's an actor, crew member, who will derail your film unless you isolate them from a point of view of work out who it is and you need to pull them to one side offset and say is there something i can help you with what seems to be troubling you can we talk about it? is there anything i can do um you know i'm sensing something that you're not happy can i help and just bringing it op out into the open sometimes especially with crew members is, is that's the way to go because then they realize they've been rumbled mm -hmm killing with the kindness and you're saying, hey, look, I've, I'm letting you know that I've noticed your behavior. Hey, let's all get on. What what can I do to help you? If there's something that you're not happy with, let's talk. And you've kind of, they can't, in theory, then continue to be a jerk about it because you've already pointed it out to you've them. You've called them out on it. You've called them out on it. Um, with actors, I think it's, again, I think if we can find that thing that's troubling them, so you need to speak to them offset mm -hmm. and let them know that they can mention it. They're not, you don't want to do it in front of the DP. You don't want to do it in front of another actor because they might be embarrassed or what's troubling them might be the person that's stood next to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and just say, look, everything all right? Because I'm sensing this thing. And again, once you've called them out, it's, it's you know, you're all, you, you know, you want to make it, you're trying to make the film uh, the best it can be. You need their help to do that. Um, and it's just about getting them on side. Um, failing that, if you know you just want to get as much coverage as you can to try and cut it, or cut it. It's, a, it's a sad thing, but it's one of those things where you need to say, well, if they're not cooperating, mm -hmm. how can we still make the scene work um, uh, and, and, and just work with them? really do you feel that i think I, i've had this experience but do you feel that when actors feel that they're not safe because it's our job to give them a safe space to play yeah. if they feel unprotected if they feel unsafe many of them some of them will just go introvert but a yeah. lot of them will come out and will will create problems create havoc because then at that point they're in survival mode because they're yeah. exposing themselves so much out there that if like if this guy or this girl does not have my back, I gotta take care of myself. So screw everything else, and that's when the problems start. Would you agree with that? Um, yeah. Uh, I was just trying to think of something else then as an example. Sorry, dude. Um, no worries. Just repeat that back to me again. That when when actors are feeling uh, that they're unsafe. They're not safe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's, I've made that mistake before, actually, where the actor's very, feeling very vulnerable. They've just given me the performance that I want. And what I've done is that I've, I've kind of got, oh, thank God, we've got the take. Right, let's move on. And I'm talking to the DP. But now I find the time to go up to the actor and go, that was awesome. This, that, and the other. You nailed it. Da, 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 da. Is there another take you want to try? Do you want to try a different way? Because obviously that was the way that I asked you to do it. Is there another input? And they think, oh, no, no, no. If you like that, that was fine. Mm -hmm. Rather than, uh, you know, they feel like they they want to give it another go, but a different, a different way. And there was a tip that I picked up from Spielberg, actually, where I was watching the extras on Catch Me If You Can with DiCaprio. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that they would do all these takes the way that Spielberg wanted DiCaprio to do it. And at the end, Spielberg would just say, right, dude, just do another one, but go crazy. Mm -hmm. Do something outrageous. Yep. And he would say that in the edit, nine times out of ten, they would use the outrageous take because there was no inhibitions. DiCaprio felt free. 
but it was just the fact that he had been listened to the actors need to know that they put their point of view across um and sometimes i've had suggestions from the actors that i want to go with and i might make more of a thing of it to the crew that we're going with the actor's suggestion just so they go hey everyone this idea was from this actor isn't it a great idea we're now going to shoot it this way and they kind of feel a little bit hey i've put some input in here and everyone knows it Mm -hmm. and it's a little bit manipulative but you are protecting them in and you're also uh you know bigging them up really it is so much about filmmaking is psychology uh in 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 how you produce it how you find the money for it how you actually shoot it how you edit it how you distribute it um and and also just the psychology of telling a story with subtext and 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 creating different uh, you know th- you know things and all that kind of stuff when you when you're doing stories it's it's really interesting uh and i think filmmakers really don't get that across they don't teach that in film school that psychology right. should be a prerequisite in yeah. any any and all film schools would you agree yeah. on that it's like 50 percent of the set because you've got a psychology going on with the crew mm-hmm. you've got the actors with the director you've got the director and the execs you've got it's all it's all egos it's has he or she had her input you know it's i don't know it's like you know it's the classic story of as well of like the editor and the director leaving in shots that they know to be bad Mm -hmm. or over long so that when it goes up the chain to the producers and the execs oh yeah they go don't like that shot take it out good idea thank you very much producer b we'll take that great example the great you know input and then you take out the shot and they, everyone feels that they've been heard. And the danger comes is when you present someone with an edit where it's in a really good place. And if they're insecure that they need to make changes, otherwise they feel that they haven't been heard, you're going to be damaging the movie. Um, and then you're into a battle there. So you almost want to go, well, let's leave in that shot. That piece of information is redundant in that scene. So we'll leave that in. And then if no one picks up on it, you can take it out anyway. Right, and that's that's a piece of advice as a as an editor. For so many years, I would leave mistakes in. I would for yeah. the client. I would just you know, yeah. doing commercials or doing music videos. I would leave a mistake, like something so obvious that be like, oh, it's just it's just so they have something to justify their job. Yeah, yeah, you know. And, 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 and all credit to a producer. I think it was again Spielberg. He Sam Mendes was saying in an interview that when he showed Spielberg American Beauty. The one note from Spielberg was, who's the exact, because it was the movie through DreamWorks, he said, don't change a frame. Now, the the confidence from Spielberg, he could have said, well, look, I would have done it this way. You want to tighten up that scene, da, 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 da. But Spielberg had nothing to prove. He didn't need to show Sam Mendes how to make films. Yeah. His only note was, don't change anything. Because he's Spielberg. Because he's Spielberg. (laughs) But also, it's like I don't need to. I don't need to show you that I'm Spielberg. Yeah. I need to prove to you that I know my stuff, and I think that's such a valuable thing. And if I if I come across crew members and producers, especially, and I'm saying, hey, I have nothing to add to that Skype call. I have nothing to to amend because I think what it is is it's in a good place right now. You know, that's that's really good because then when they do have a note, you listen. 